Hi friends, welcome to another video on Tutorials Point with me Richa. And today in this aviation module segment, we will talk about cabin crew duties under abnormal operations. Well, the very word abnormal signifies that it is not normal. So what a cabin crew is expected to do under normal circumstances during an abnormal situation, it could be any kind of emergency, any kind of firefighting situation, decompression, etc. She is expected to behave in a certain manner and there are certain protocols that she needs to follow. Let's take a look at what is in store for us today. Well, on the agenda today, we will talk about planned emergency evacuations, unplanned emergency evacuations, decompression, pilot incapacitation and firefighting. Well, worry not if you do not understand these terminologies, we will discuss them in a lot of detail. So the cabin crew duties during abnormal operations as the word abnormal mentions, she is expected to follow certain rules or certain protocols. Let's see what they are. Unplanned and abnormal emergencies, they come suddenly, they do not come announce that, hey, we are coming. They just come in and you are expected to behave in a certain manner when they come in. Little or no time to prepare a course of action. Well, of course, there is no time because they come unannounced and you do not really have too much of time in your hand. So you have to be very quick decision maker. According to the situation, you need to react. But there are certain protocols wherein you need to take care of. Most emergencies occur during takeoff or landing. Friends, that is the most crucial phase of the flight. Most of the accidents or emergencies occur when the flight is about to take off or when it is about to land. Very few aircraft accidents occur during the cruise phase of the flight. The most important litigation tool is the silent review. A silent review is what the cabin crew needs to do while she's sitting on the jump seat. During a takeoff or landing, she's supposed to do something known as a silent review, which is making sure that she's undergoing certain safety requirements or rather understanding if something happens at that particular time, how she's supposed to react or what actions she's supposed to take. Cabin crew must quickly react and according to the situation because no two emergency situations are alike or the same. So every situation in an emergency differs from one to another. A crew needs to have good judgment and good decision making powers. Let's talk in detail about planned emergency evacuation. When it's a planned emergency evacuation, the pilot will give a lot of information about the emergency to the cabin crew and they need to follow certain protocols. Let's take a look at them. So certain protocols for planned emergency evacuations are the flight crew will contact the senior cabin crew member immediately whenever pilot realizes that there might be an emergency situation. So as soon as the senior cabin crew member gets to know this from the pilot, she will brief the other cabin crew members. The other cabin crew members might be in the cabin doing their service of food, beverages, etc. Everybody needs to be called to the forward galley, which is the front galley of the aircraft. And the senior most crew will brief these crew members what the pilot has communicated to her. Cabin crew will brief the passengers using equipment as appropriate, brace positions, life jacket, including any other positions or seat belts and exit, etc. So basically what we are saying is the passenger needs to be informed that there is an emergency and they have to be briefed about how they are expected to behave when that emergency strikes. Brief the ABPs for self-help desk. Now you will be having ABPs. Now ABPs are able-bodied passengers. These are your passengers who will help the crew members during the emergency evacuation procedures. These ABPs are going to be sitting next to the emergency exit areas and they will go about their duties. Cabin crew to carry out cabin secure check. The cabin crew will take a walk and see everything is proper. Ensure the flight crew are advised that the cabin is secure. So the senior most cabin crew will call up the pilot and tell him that the cabin is secure. Adjust the cabin lightning as appropriate. You need to dim the cabin light appropriately according to the time of the day. Cabin crew take up the crew stations on command. So everything is ready. Everybody is ready 
waiting for the emergency to happen and once that does happen they are supposed to do their duties as has been mentioned to them during the initial training. Well let's understand the protocols to be followed on emergency evacuation once the aircraft has landed what is the crew supposed to do? So she has to shout out the brace commands from the flight crew. Cabin crew will adopt the brace position and she needs to advise the passengers about the brace position. So as soon as the aircraft lands, everybody is supposed to shout out their brace commands and be in their brace positions. Once the aircraft has come to a complete stop, Await the evacuation orders from the flight crew. As soon as the aircraft lands and has a full stop, the cabin crew will wait for the pilot to give the command of evacuation. In case the flight crew does not give the command to the cabin crew, in that case, a cabin crew member has to use her own sensibilities and judgments and take a decision of evacuating the passengers. Check the outside conditions and make sure that you operate the exit, open the doors and open the window exits. Deliver appropriate passenger commands. So the passengers have to be told certain commands of get up, get out, slide down the slide, etc. Evacuate the passengers as appropriate, whether you have made an emergency landing on a land or you have ditched into water, you need to give out appropriate commands for the crew and the passengers. Well, let's talk about unplanned emergency evacuations. Now, when the emergency is not planned, you will not get certain commands from the flight deck crew. It has just happened and it's unplanned and you do not really get that much time to prepare yourself, prepare the cabin, prepare the passengers. So let's take a look at what are the protocols for unplanned emergency evacuations. Well, let's look at the protocols for unplanned emergency evacuation. When an emergency happens, you need to do the following. The flight crew will give the command to evacuate. So you have to keep, uh, you know, being very alert and listen to the pilot's command to evacuate. Cabin crew will follow procedures as she has done for the planned emergency evacuation. In case the crew does not get command from the flight deck, or that is a pilot or co-pilot, she needs to herself decide and make a quick decision on how to evacuate and when to evacuate. Friends, let's talk about decompression. Now, it is a very scary situation that you might feel that there is lack of oxygen inside the cabin. Most of the time, the cabin is in the aircraft, the cabin is having you know, uh, oxygen level which is appropriate even if it is, uh, you know, at flying at 33,000 feet or 35,000 feet. It has pressurized the cabin accordingly. Now what you need to do is when there is a decompression, there is a sudden drop in the oxygen level inside the cabin. And what happens is suddenly Above the passengers, there is a PSU, which is passenger service unit. Oxygen masks come down automatically and you need to help yourself with the oxygen mask by placing in these oxygen masks and breathing so as to not have hypoxia, which is lack of oxygen. Let's see the cabin crew's duties and responsibilities and the protocol during decompression. You need to connect to the nearest oxygen supply. So if the crew is in the cabin and there is a sudden loss of oxygen inside the cabin, the crew needs to hold on to the nearest oxygen supply that she can see on her way to the galley. She needs to sit down and secure herself first. You will not be able to help anybody else, but you need to help yourself the first thing. Advise the passenger to don on or to put on the oxygen masks. Wait for dissent or announcement from the flight crew. The captain will give an announcement when it is safe to remove these oxygen masks when the aircraft has come to a particular appropriate altitude. And that is the time that the oxygen masks can be removed. Contact the flight crew to establish the situation. As much as possible, you should try and contact the flight deck and understand what the situation is. Check the passengers and carry out cabin secure. After captain says that it is safe to remove the oxygen mask, at that point of time, the flight attendant will take a walk and see the passengers, how they are feeling or in case anybody needs first aid or any kind of help, she will help them out with that. Administer oxygen to passengers as and when it is necessary. 
Next, we're going to talk about pilot incapacitation. Now, this is again a very risky situation because the captain of your ship or the captain of your aircraft has been incapacitated or is not fit to fly and your lives depend on the pilot because he is heading the flight. Well, in such a situation, what is the protocol that the crew member needs to follow? Let's take a look. Well, she has to follow certain duties like respond to call from the flight crew. So a pilot might call the cabin crew on the interphone and also, you know, ask to speak to her. Secure the pilot in seat or remove him from the flight deck. Get him out in the cabin and make him seat on the first row of the cabin. Administer first aid as required. Well, the captain or the pilot may be feeling sick or nausea or he might be having any kind of, uh, you know, Probably he's not feeling too well, so you need to give him a first aid, whatever the kind may be. Remain on the flight deck and assist the checklist if required. Well, if one pilot is out of the flight deck, one of the crew members needs to take the place of the pilot and assist the co-pilot with the checklist that is there. In single cabin crew operations, assistance from passengers may be required as and when it's necessary. Let's come to firefighting. Well, this is again a very scary situation because when you are in the aircraft and if there is a fire, fire spreads really, really fast and you need to really blow out that fire so that it does not harm the passengers. So how do you do firefighting? Let's take a look. Certain protocols that the crew member needs to follow is she needs to locate the source of fire. So where is the fire coming from? Is it from the galley, the kitchen area of the aircraft or is it because a pilot uh, or a particular passenger has smoked inside the lavatory which is against the norms so she needs to locate the source of fire identify what is the type of fire is it a first grade fire or a second grade fire apply appropriate procedures ensure that you are securing yourself with appropriate clothing and also wearing something which is known as pbe which is protective breathing equipment this is just to secure the cabin crew Select appropriate extinguisher or agent. So there are firefighting uh, extinguishers which are there under each cabin crew jump seat. Attack the fire means you need to fight the fire. Ensure that the flight crew is advised. Now a cabin crew needs to really make sure that the pilot knows that there is fire in the cabin or in the galley area and you need to keep your pilot informed as and when the fire is being fighted. Communicate with the other crew members as well as make sure that the passengers are monitored and safe and they're away from the fire situation as much as possible. Well friends, that makes us come to the end or conclude this particular module on cabin crew duties, abnormal operations. I'm sure you have understood in great detail about this particular module. Keep listening, more modules coming your way. Till then, thank you very much.